Ever shoot a photo and the composition is wrong or something's out of frame? Well, Photoshop now offers a new feature that allows you to rebuild an image automatically called Generative Expand. Is it great? Not really. Is it terrible? Not really. Here, let me show you exactly how it works. Let's start off with an absolutely it just, I think this is like one of the most perfect photographs ever, a real one, a, a captured with a DSLR. There's no AI going on so far by a photographer who really knows what he or she is doing. So beautiful photograph, B but it's also high res. It's 42 megapixels, by the way. So a heck of a lot of pixels going on. And you can see that's the case because we're seeing 25% up here in the title tab. What does that mean? 25%, obviously that's one quarter, right? So we're seeing one out of every four pixels horizontally, one out of every four pixels vertically. And so four by four, that's 16. So we're only seeing one pixel on screen right now is trying to do the work of 16 actual pixels inside of the image. So when you, when you hear somebody say 300 pixels per inch, you're going to print it at 300 pixels per inch. That's 300 uh, horizontally, 300 vertically. So it's actually 90,000 pixels per inch. That's resolution for you. If you really want to see what's going on here, then you got to zoom in. So I'll zoom in all the way to 100% so we can see just how gorgeous this image is. Isn't it? Are, are you hungry? If you are, it's probably making things even worse. Oh, you just pause and go get yourself a sandwich or something. But notice that we have some shallow depth of field. And so this stock is an impeccable focus. It's great. So, so these eggplants over here are as well. This, this, this ratatouille right here. But this leaf is, is coming toward us. So it's a little bit out of focus. It's pushing the boundaries. And this leaf right here is, is going backward out of the you know at, at, out of the depth of field as well so it's getting a little bit i wouldn't say blurry but it's getting a little bit soft but i and i should say by the way that this image comes to us from the dreams time image library and i don't know why you'd want a 25 percent discount or five free images but if so you should check out the description all right so i i want to see the image wide however so i'm going to zoom out by pressing control zero, command zero on the Mac. And I, I, this is already a whole lot of image, 42 megapixels, but I'm, I'm feeling greedy. I just am. Uh, am I hungry? I don't know, but I want more to this image. I want, I want it to be taller so that we can see more of this spatula. For example, what's going on? It's cropped and more of this ratatouille. We're, we're probably missing about a quarter of the dish right now. What's up with this tomato? You know, this one right here. And so what you do, if you want, there's generative fill in the uh, uh, contextual taskbar right here, which follows you around like an eager puppy dog. The, 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 if you want generative expand, then you need to switch to the crop tool, which you can get by pressing the C key. Like so, and now notice generative ex expand. It's right there. You don't really ever need to click it, by the way, I'll show you. Um, and definitely don't click it right now because you haven't done anything. But ratio, I want you to see that because it's mostly well, you you decide. It's your it's your you know funeral. But this I don't recommend it because these guys down here are all very low res. Ten twenty four seven sixty eight up to thirteen sixty six seven sixty eight. It's like. And I don't think this is true, but it's as if Photoshop wants to trick you. These would, all of these would take the resolution down to a megapixel. You know, the, the, the you know variations is 1024 by 768 is going to be less than 1366 by 768, but there's still going to be tiny images. At which point you're just going to crop inward. You're not going to need generative expand, and it's going to look great because. You're reducing the well, or you're just crop. You're just cropping. Actually, is what you're doing there. Uh, eight and a half by eleven by three hundred. That's your biggest, and that's going to be eight megapixels. So if I choose that, notice it's going to crop inward. We're still seeing generative expand. There's no need for generative expand to be here because you're going to crop the image and downsample it from forty-two megapixels to eight megapixels. In other words, no. 
don't do that. We want to add. I want to see more of the spatula, not less. And so the solution is not just to click cancel. Definitely don't click done. The solution, what's this? Oh, that's the stuff where you pin the location of the taskbar. The solution I found, maybe you'll find a better one, is to click ratio, select ratio, and then click cancel, and then you're back where you want to be so that you haven't done any cropping at all. But if you do, if you were to crop, I, I want to make something clear, you're not going to lose pixels as long as delete crop pixels up here in the options bar is turned off. You would just bring in the canvas. You would downsample the image, however. So that would be plenty destructive, but you'll still have these details out here that are dimmed right now. They, they would still be part of the image, part of your layer. You would just have what's known as big layer. And uh, that means it's just kind of temporarily cropped. Anyway, who cares? Ratio and cancel, not done. And now what I wanna do is make this image taller, much taller. And I wanted to, I want more down and up, by the way. So I'm going to press the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac and drag down. You could also be dragging up on that top handle. And I want the height to be about 13,000 pixels. 12,988 will work out just fine, which will in total give us 104 megapixels. Now you can click generate because that basically notice up here in, uh, in the options bar, fill is set to generative expand. You could set it to content aware fill. That's the way things used to work before this is photoshop beta 24.7 by the way that's the way things worked in the old days was you went with content aware fill which is a a, a a ghastly way to work you don't want that you want generative expand which still i'll show you not not good but anyway i'll click generate and then, or i could just press the enter key and then we'll get the progress bar and what's happening here is photoshop is communicating with firefly and so you need a live internet connection to pull this off and about right here i predict let's say where my cursor is that's when all of a sudden the progress bar will disappear well all right so so i i, I wasn't optimistic enough but that's cool right that it that that it it, 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 it predicts that it's going to do worse than it does so it actually moves more quickly than it suggests now what we can do if you're so inclined, is we can make fun of the results because, you know, this is just typical AI stuff, right? The, 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 the spatula, I'll press the M key to switch to the rectangular marquee tool so I don't accidentally crop anything, but I want you to see the spatula goes a little south. So um, AI, right, Firefly, is hallucinating. That's a real term, by the way. It's hallucinating what the what the details what details it needs to make up out of thin air, and its hallucination is is a little wonky, right? So it's gotten a little vegetal. This 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 spatula. We have some leafy stuff going on here. We have this. Don't know what that is. We've got some more leaves in general. And then up here, in addition to this delightful ratatouille, it finishes out the dish. Does an awesome job in my opinion. Hey, real quick, just so you know, next week I'm gonna show you a foolproof way to expand an image and achieve great results. So, you know, subscribe. But in the meantime, if you want a preview, then join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. And now back to why what we got isn't quite what we want. And then it decided that this tomato right here is, is sliced in half so that we can see the inside of the tomato. And then I haven't the vaguest idea what this bamboo feature is supposed to be. But hey, if you don't like it, right? Properties panel right here. And you can switch to a different variation. Now it is going to take a moment because again, 104 megapixels. This is an enormous image. It's now 300 megabytes flat in memory and that's because every pixel you may or may not know this when you're working with an 8 bit per channel per, per an 8 bit per pixel per channel image which is what we're seeing right here then every pixel takes up 3 bytes one for red one for green and one for blue and so as a result this 104 megapixel image is weighing in at about 300 megabytes anyway that's just, you know, so you know. And and the, the this time, 
because I switched to a different variation. The um, spatula is working out better. We have some vegetal stuff down here. We have some wonderful folds. I actually really like these folds in the uh, napkin or, or the placemat or whatever this is. It's sitting on this wood surface here. And look, that one tomato has turned into a whole bunch of tomatoes now. Ratatouille still looking good in a very round dish, bowl whatever it's called. And then I still have a third variation to choose from, perhaps the best. Actually, oh my God, this looks really good, doesn't it? You know, we, we have the spatula getting hidden by a little bit of napkin or place cloth or whatever it's called, placemat. Um, but, but, and then we have, you know, a cookie. Is that a cookie? I don't know. But, but, but here's the problem. Because I did kind of say at the outset that this feature is not ready not ready for prime time. And uh, that's true. That's 100% true. Um, this feature is a disaster, in my humble opinion. And to, to, to make this clear, what I'll do is I'll go over to the layer mask. Notice that we have a new layer. So before I, before I cropped this image, it was flat. It's flat JPEG. You can see that it's a JPEG jpeg file up here in the title tab which means it didn't have a layer but now it's got an independent layer for the original image that has not we haven't lost any pixels there and then there's another layer right here the generative layer that's been added to the mix and if we want to see where the generative layer starts so so this is the actual image with its very high resolution data right there i'll zoom in to 100 percent so you can see that like this right here, this details in sharp focus. So is this little bit of, I gather, eggplant. I'm not the b world. I am a foodie, but I don't like make it. So, so I'm, I'm more of the guy that goes to a restaurant and buys it from people who know what they're doing. But you can see that we've got some very nice detail right here. But as soon as I turn this thing on, generative layer, you can see that our detail starts to go awry. And if you want to see where the actual boundary is, notice that it is cropped. I'll go ahead and control or command click on that layer mask. That's what I meant to say. It is masked. So um, right there at the dotted line, the dotted selection line, the marching ants, that's where we go from real high resolution data to made up low resolution data on the part of Firefly communicating with Photoshop right here. And so Firefly is making this low resolution detail one to two megapixels at most four, but I haven't ever seen any four megapixel imagery out of Firefly so far. And then it throws it at, it throws it at Photoshop and Photoshop upsamples it. And so we end up coming up with this goopy junk right here. So you can see we weren't in high focus where the, the cloth is concerned in the first place. But now I think it's fair to say you can see that it is very low focus. All right, well, let's try let's try a look at a different area. I do want you to see, I'm going to Alt-click in a layer mask for a second. Control-D, Command-D on a Mac to deselect. I just want you to see what happened. It, 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 it made its own selection. For, to, to generate this layer mask. And it fudges the selection as well. So it blurs it. It, it, it kind of applies a median filter is, is what it's doing, the equivalent of. And so it's not so much blurry as it's mushy in order to give, you know, to give Photoshop a little wiggle room in order to accommodate this new information. All right, so I'll switch back to the actual image and I'll once again control or command click to convert that layer mask for a moment to a selection outline so we can see the marching ants. And so this is even more obvious. We're going from this wonderful detail right here where this leaf is concerned to absolute mush. And notice that it happens softly. It just kind of mushes off there. And, and we can imagine that's kind of pretty and, but it's not, it's horrible. It's, it's absolutely ghastly. And this is, this is just the way it is for everything. This stuff, the, 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 the resolution just deteriorates all over the place. And that's because 
if I shift click on this layer mask, now I've done something to this layer mask in, in all different keyboard varieties here. If I shift click on it, I turn it off. And what that shows you is it's actually regenerated the entire image. So we are now in actual photographic territory. If I shift click again and turn the layer mask on, you can see here's our wonderful detail as captured by a DSLR, no no AI whatsoever in here if I turn the layer mask off. That's what AI thinks of it. And that's that's part of the problem. It, it can't, Firefly can't generate, let's say it can generate four megapixels. I, again, I haven't seen any, uh, I haven't seen that, but, but let's say it can, let's, let's be optimistic. Well, this is 104 megapixels. So that means that it's upsampling by an absolute order of magnitude. And I know you're thinking, what do you mean by order of magnitude, Deke? What, what, give, give me some, give me the deets. Well, it's, 26 times as large. If it, if Firefly did indeed give Photoshop four megapixels worth of imagery, then Photoshop had to image size it, upsample it to 2,600%. That's how far it went. Meaning that uh, you know, it, it generated a ton of pixels on the fly. So even though this is the best version where where the various varieties are concerned, variations are concerned here in the properties panel, this is still dog chow. Now, I hear some of you saying, surely, Deke, okay, granted, this this is this is no good. Surely there is a solution. And there is, surely. And and, and the idea is that you need to ask for less. You can't ask for this much at a time. You can't because it is reinventing the entire image, you can't ask for, you know, 104 million pixels. It's, it's just not going to work out for you. So what you can do is you could say, all right, um, where's the real detail again? It starts here. All right, so I can ask for one megapixel, by the way, is, is what you want. And if you're going to ask for one megapixel, you want to press the shift key as you're dragging with the rectangular marquee tool, and you want to go out to about there, 1,024 is what you're looking for, but this is good. And you could move it down a little bit like so. You don't want to work from what Photoshop is created with Generative Expand. Because if you do, now I can click Generative Fill, by the way. But I'm not going to enter a prompt. The, the, the prompts are not necessary for this. It's not going to make it work any better, by the way. It's not going to make it give you more pixels. You just need to ask for less at a time. But the problem with working the way I'm working right now is that it's going to split the difference. So it's actually kind of blurring. I don't know if you can see that, but it's blurring the pixels as it goes from the high resolution detail up here to the low resolution detail down here. I think it's going to be more obvious if I go up. Let's, let's check this out. I'll turn off those two top layers. We're well outside of the real detail. There it is. And so I'll draw another square. I'll press the shift key as I'm dragging. I'm going to have to ooh, auto scroll a little bit. That's uh, unfortunate, I think. But I'll go ahead and drag out until that heads up display right there says something in the neighborhood of 1,024 pixels. That's as big as you want to get. And I'll zoom out just a little bit. And now I'll turn that stuff back on and I'll click generate to fill and generate, but we don't need to do anything. Actually, we're starting in low res detail all over the place, aren't we? So this is just, just going to be more mush. It's, it's, it's not going to work out, but I'm going to let it run. I'm not going to cancel it. So you can see it's, it's, it's very soft. It's also because of the shape of my selection and does this number right here. And so undo that. Let's take it down into what is actual real detail down here. And so it, it can it can it can work from that. Generative fill, click generate. And I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of kicking and pounding a dead horse here, but I really want you to get a sense for what this feature is capable of doing. So notice that it starts high res enough because that's that's Firefly. It's Going to give you one megapixel details pretty easily, but then it drops off. 
and it starts matching the bad detail that it's getting from the generative fill layer. If you don't want that, just go ahead and turn off all that stuff that's not the actual photo. You know, I'm going to call this layer actual photo because we need to know that that's the case. And now I can drag and I'm probably, no, I might have done this in a way that's not going, going to invoke an auto scroll. So I'm looking for 10, 24. Oh, nailed it. That is a megapixel, by the way, and or more or less. And so um, I'll go ahead and drag this up. This is what Firefly is designed to accommodate. And I'll click Generate to Fill. And thanks to the fact, click Generate, and thanks to the fact that it's locking on to real detail right here, and it's not seeing anything out here in the checkerboard transparency. So it doesn't have anything to lead it astray. It doesn't have any low resolution detail to mess it up. Then it is going to look at that. That is some nice detail compared with this, no, it's terrible right there. That's the bad stuff that Generative Expand came up with. And this is the good stuff that you can create one little tiny bit at a time. And if you want to know more about this, stay tuned for next week, by the way, because next week I'm going to show you a tried and true way to get high resolution detail while expanding an image or, or just generative fill in general. But this is not it. You can't just go nuts and uncrop an image and expect to get good results. So what do you want to do? Well, I just, you don't want to, you don't want to use this feature. That's what you don't want to do. That's what you want to do. Don't. But I'll revert this image back to the way it was. I don't mean to be unkind. You know that. But here's the deal. A Firefly can only give what it can give. It, it can only give a megapixel. Now, there will be a day, if you're, if you're watching this movie four years from now, the, the Firefly may be able to generate 16 megapixels. But you, it, it, the, the problem is, I want to stress this, the problem is, not that Firefly sucks or something like that. That's not it at all. The, the processing required to generate this many pixels, 104 megapixels, it, it, there's GPUs that are just spinning all over the place. NVIDIA is doing very well off of this. It's making billions of dollars off of generative AI. However, Adobe, frankly, isn't. This is a loss leader for Adobe right now, and that's why it has to work low res, but you need to know that. So let's say this image, I'll, I'm going to go up to the image menu and choose the image size command for a moment. So we can see if you're looking at pixels, this image is 8,048 pixels wide. Okay. So what you do, this is beyond most of us. We're not going to do this, but if you wanted to figure this out, if you wanted to figure out, I'm just going to make it slightly taller a little bit taller, and then I'll fill in the details. So you know 1024 times 1024, because that was that square I just drew with the rectangular marquee tool. That's 1,048,000 pixels. All right, so then you divide 1 million, which is a big number, 1,048,000. You divide that by 8,048 so that you can figure out how much height you can add. So I'll divide 8048 equals... That means we can add 130 pixels. So I can do plus 130 for this. I wouldn't do it here. Can't do it here because that would stretch the image. So cancel out. But that's all you can do. You can add 130 pixels. So what you would do is you'd switch to the crop tool as before. If you want to trust generative expand and you would alt or option drag this guy down. Now I didn't pay any attention, right? I didn't pay attention to the height value. So 5200 plus 130, well, I'm going to use my calculator for that too, plus 5,200, is 5,330. Not much, but here we go. I'm alt dragging down 5,300. I've already gone too far. 5,330 is what I can afford to do. Look, it's, it's not even in the snap zone. And so, all right, 5,400. That's still, that's more between the bottom and the top. I'm adding more than a megapixel. But sadly, it's worse than all that. And so why? You know, I'm just adding this little sliver at the bottom and the, at the top. But that's enough to completely wreck it. And so here's the good news. This progress bar will start to end. Yes, it just ended, just like I hoped it would. This, this detail is going to fall apart. 
Notice it. Notice how choppy it is. It's terrible. All I did was add a megapixel. A little more than a megapixel, but not much more. Problem is this. Shift click on a layer mask. It had to redraw the entire image. And redrawing the entire image, by the way, I'll bring up cam image size again. So what is that? That's 848 times 5408. That's 43 and a half million pixels that it had to invent. And that's because, frankly, not only can Firefly not generate more than a megapixel or four, maybe four, but Photoshop is too stupid as it's constructed right now to just generate the pixels it needs. It has to generate the entire image. And as a result, it gives you very low resolution results. And so am I saying don't use generative expand under any conditions? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's going to disappoint you unless you're working on the tiny, tiny little image that you want to make a little taller or a little wider. This is not the solution. This is very possibly the worst feature that's ever been introduced into Photoshop. For a better way to expand your images, join me at patreon.com slash deeknow. In the meantime, feel free to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and then go to deek.com and sign up for my newsletter. Oh, and like everyone else in the world, I'm now on threads. Find me at Deek Now. I'm Deek McClellan. This is Deek Now.